time to never play this game again. Probably. Probably. Which is a shame, because so much of it is so good, but it feels like they thought of the Ash system, and they were just like, oh, it's so good, let's base the entire fucking game around it. Let's make it so that if you are not using Ashes, you are just fucked. And that is annoying as shit. <laughs> I do look forward to seeing speedruns of this game. I want to see the, the bullshit ways that players find to get through stuff crazy quick. Because, like, this took me... How long? Should I play this game? Like, 50 hours? Yeah, 55 hours or so. Um, and, like... Yeah. I... Bruh. Speedruns will be neat. Yeah, neither. Special thanks. George R. R. Martin. Vince... Gerardus, okay. Yeah, just like how they figure out how to quickly level up and uh, get powerful weapons early. Like the individual spots they'll hit. I'm not even really sure how much you have to play of the game. Because you could take... No, you wouldn't be able to do that. You'd probably have to fight... Uh, Margit. And God. Whatever the fuck. You'd have to fight Margit and God. Whatever the fuck his first name is. The boss of that first God, dude. You'd fight them. Then you'd have to just make your way to the city, I guess. I don't know if you'd have to do much more. Outside of that, it would just all be leveling and, uh,. Whatever else. But all in all, this game is very good. I think it... I hate to say that it's... I d like it less because it's not Dark Souls. In terms of... Uh... Yeah, I hate to say that I don't like it because it's... Um... Because it's not Dark Souls in terms of story and like design, but... I worry, though, that that's all I'm going to be saying. Because the Dark Souls bits, still very good. Dark Souls does not stop being good. It very much feels like a sequel to Dark Souls 3, rather than, like, its own thing, which is kind of annoying. Because, you know, 1, 2, and 3 are all vastly different from each other. Bloodborne is different enough, even if it still feels a bit like 3. Um, but yeah, the story is neat, I guess. I don't know. I love, I love Dark Souls world and general themes much more than this. I can't really figure out the themes of this game. I don't, I don't get what it's about. Take off! Yeah, like, the world is neat and... Well, Bloodborne's different in combat. I, I more mean, like, the way the engine feels, the way the hits feel. Like, Dark Souls 1, hitting an enemy and the way attacks feel in terms of you know, how long they are, when you can cancel out of them, when you can do whatever. Um, it feels very different to Bloodborne, in terms of just the pure mechanical feel of the game. 3 and Bloodborne feel very similar, because they're both very fast games that require, uh, you know, they're more aggress aggression-focused. Although 3 does have a more spells and whatnot to allow you to not be up close. But yeah, like, 3... Uh, Bloodborne and this all feel similar in terms of the way the hits work. Which is not bad, because 3 does feel very good, but it's... it almost becomes too aggressive. One where you lose something if you, uh... if you want to play it slow. <laughs> yeah, the weapon variety is staggering, which almost feels like a detriment to the game. There's so many weapons that just I'd never use, because why the fuck would I? I'm gonna go fight some dragons, why not? Fight dragons while I was trying to give my thoughts, this one go. Yeah, there's one right here. But yeah, the weapon variety is staggering, but there's so many weapons that don't really have a reason to exist. Like, you know, I've picked up probably about ten different straight swords throughout the game, 
and I did not explore everything. I've explored at most half of everything. Um, and there's just so many more weapons. So if somebody wants, you know, a great hammer or something, they don't need to look that far to find one that they'll like. You don't need ten of them. Bloodborne, I think, did it really well with weapon variety, where it just... You have only about ten to fifteen weapons in the game, but they're all radically different. And they all, you know, feel unique and have special things about them that make them really good. To fit different playstyles. When does that dragon come in? There we go. Hello, friend. Hello, land sex. Oh, God. Jesus Christ. Where'd he go? Did he just leave? I mean, a lot of weapons is nice, but I think weapon variety is more important than a lot of weapons. Like, Bloodborne has great weapon variety. You've got things like the the Great Sword. What do you think? I don't remember if it's Ludwig's Holy Blade or not. Let me actually find, like, Bloodborne's weapon list. Well, should I just sit on the fucking map? Uh, Bloodborne weapon list. Weapons, here we go. But yeah, like, the amygdalin arm plays differently to the beast claw, plays differently to the beast hunter staff. Uh, the blade of mercy is unique, the bloodlet is unique, boom hammer is unique, burial blade is cool, the shikage is cool. Holy moonlight sword plays vaguely similar to Ludwig's holy blade, but it's different enough. The kirk hammer is neat, the cost parasite is different. I feel like the souls games do have a lot of weapons, though, like dark soul... Let me actually... Hold on, elden ring weapon... List. Like, I think what Elden Ring does well is the number of types of weapons. You've got axes, ballistas, bows, claws, colossal swords, colossal weapon. Why is that different from swords? Crossbows, curved greatswords, curved swords, daggers, fists, flails, glintstone stabs, great axes, great bows, great spears, great swords, halvers, hammers, heavy thrusting swords, katanas, light bows, reapers, seals, spears, straight swords, thrusting swords, torches, twin blades, war hammers, and whips. You know. There are as many weapon types as Bloodborne has weapons, I think. And if not, it's close. So that's what, six times... Yeah, it's like 31 weapon types. Whereas Bloodborne sits at... Um, if I look only at the Hunter Tools, because that's what I'm interested in. Wait, no, not Hunter Tools. Where's the... Trick Weapons, that's what it's called. Yeah, there are more weapon types in Elden Ring than there are weapons in Bloodborne. And that feels like a lot of weapon types, which is really good. But then each weapon type has, like, ten weapons in it. Which is insane. You know, the number of axes. Some of these axes don't need to exist. Either because, you know, it's just straight up worse than another, or because it just doesn't do anything different. Like, it doesn't have a... I hate, fucking hate Fextra Life playing ads, holy shit. And, like, ultimately... You know, it's not a problem that there's a bunch of weapons because that dev time for those extra weapons would not necessarily go to making the game better. The game is already very good. I just think it's it's strange to have this many weapons when a lot of them probably play the same. Like the hand axe, the battle axe, the highland axe, those all look fairly similar. I'm not sure why you need that much choice when it comes to a very basic axe. 24 weapon types of calamity. Fuck no. Uh, the music is good. Big fan of it. It's... You know, it's what it needs to be. It's got great epic scores for some of the boss fights. You know what? I just realized there is a boss I can go do. I skipped out on. I have to go, I think, over this way. Yeah, the music's good. The world, I think, is fantastic. It manages to capture a lot of that Dark Souls feel whilst having, you know, big, open, explorable environments that are so very different from the usual Souls areas. 
but it still keeps that level of quality. You know, if you explore, you're going to find stuff. You're going to have a lot to look for, a lot to look through. You've still got great area design. It does seem to have cut down a fair amount on just complete dick tree, which I kind of miss. I gotta say, I kind of miss it. I want to have to look around all the corners and watch out for enemies that are going to come slap my ass when I'm not paying attention. That's what Soul game, Souls games are. Yeah, world design, very good. I think it's what open world RPGs should be. And I love that there are no quest markers. I love that it is actually just explore, rather than have the game tell you where to go. Some other series have done quite poorly. Ow, fuck. And for the bosses of the game, they're quite good. I like them. Got a lot of variety. You've got good, like, good one-on-one -on -one fights, and then there are also, like, 1v2 fights. Those exist, so yay. I think a lot of those can fuck off, though. Because it really does seem like the game was designed around... Uh, not more general character builds, but character builds that feature more than one method of attack. And I don't like that. But yeah, it seems like they really want you to invest in, like, you know, a melee weapon and a fucking set of spells or something. And I've never been one for using magic. So I was forced to get my fucking Mimic going, which it is very good, and it is quite fun to just turn any fight I want into a fucking 2v1. But, like, I hate that I basically have to do that. I hate that there's so many fights, which some of them are optional, but they also give very nice benefits that I'd like to have. I hate that there's fights where it feels like that's the only option. Now for the second one. Because, again, two enemy boss fights. They're fun, right? Players love getting gangbanged. And I think the, the dual boss fights in this game really just highlight why Ornstein and Smell were such good design. Because you can fight Ornstein and Smell almost individually, but it's a matter of paying attention enough to see the other one and what they're doing. It's not about, you know... Fucking... get dicked on by two enemies at once. Which this game makes the boss fights into, and then gets out of that by having the Ashes system. I think a lot of the Ashes just need to be stronger. Like, Giant Rats is insanely weak, which maybe it's fine to force the player to use better, stronger summons. I understand why they'd want to do that. But at least have, like, stronger versions of similar summons. Which maybe there is. Maybe there is a uh, a stronger. Maybe there's a stronger summon that's basically giant rats. And I think, I think the fact that the final boss is just a single dude, kind of showcases the problem with it. Is like, the most difficult fights in this game are not the final boss. It's not anything to do with the final boss. The final boss is fairly easy. And if I'd fought it without using a summon, I don't even think it'd be that hectic of a fight. Seemed fairly, you know, standard. It's only ever the uh, the fights against several individuals that are truly challenging. And at the same time, that challenge is completely removed by using something like Mimic Tier. Which I want to say you can get early enough to where it kind of just invalidates the game. Like, it's very, very powerful. To a frankly, unnecessary degree. It also does like me being able to start, like the stealth thing is, is weird, but it's cool. It makes sense that in a more open world game, you'd want to have a way to clear out encounters besides just walking straight into them. I always wonder if like, the stealth is too good. It kind of feels like you wouldn't really have to actually play much of a Souls game. But again, it's also not a Souls game, so is that criticism valid? 
does it matter if you have to play much of a Souls-like experience if it's not a Souls game? That really is the question. Overall, I like the game. I like it. I think it's, it has a bit of weird design. I also think that it is it is very good, and it has a lot of a lot of really good moments in it. A lot of good exploration. Good enemies. Some good boss fights. Some just piss me off. And it does that. Like the, the air tree avatar that just duplicates itself. It feels like they ran out of ideas on how to make... Or like how to ramp that fight up. Because they did quite well with it. Normally it's just, you know, you do the fight normally. And that's a fight. And then you do it with... Uh, with it, like, spawning lasers, and that's a fight. And then you do it where it does the, um, it has rot. Then that's a fight. And then they thought, shit, how do we ramp this up more? Do we make its attacks faster? Well, no, because that changes the fight. Put in a second one. Because that's not a thing that players have been complaining about since Dark Souls 2. Stonehammer made in the lands of the Newman, outside the lands between. The tool with which Queen America shattered the Elden Ring, and Radagon attempted to repair it. The hammer partially broke upon shattering the ring, becoming splintered with rune fragments. Leap up high and, while suspended midair, imbue the rune shard with light before smashing it down hard onto the ground. The heroic Radigan's signature attack. Sword wrought from the remains of a god who should have lived a life eternal. Thoughts on what the weapon portends are many and varied. Some consider it the mark of a great sin, or a sign of great devastation. Some think of it as the end of an age, while others, the beginning. Be the sword of bygone gold glory, fired it at foes. A wide golden wave fans out forward, sweeping through all enemies' continents' path. Cool. Don't really care. Don't care much. 50k on that one. Nice. I'm glad the final boss is worth a bit more. Now, I wonder if there's any more achievements that I'd want to go for. And ring a Chive Mons. Age of the Stars got that. Defeat Godric, yeah. The Dawn, Morgoth. Could try and go kill you, but I don't I don't know how to navigate that area. That I have to go through a special area, that I have to go through a secret area. Defeated Dragonlord Citisax. Huh. Um The hell is this? Let's see. Lich Dragon Fort Sex. Ah, okay. So I think I have to go. I think I don't think I can do this anymore. Yeah, I think she's pieced out. Oh, well. Defeat you, defeat you, defeat you, defeat you. Both you guys, beat them, beat that guy. Could go for you, but I have to go through that stupid area. Yeah, I think... Yeah. That's about all. About everything I care to do in this game. Ah, okay. I'm gonna rest at the table. Oh, and it becomes a uh, thing. Cool. Is it super bosses then, if it's just the one? That's still giving me buffs. I'm gonna begin Journey 2, because I want to see... Well, I mean, super bosses usually aren't endgame bosses. Like, JRPGs uh, usually have super bosses. And they're always hidden stuff on the side that are way harder than the final boss. It's a weird. Hmm. Okay, there we go. That took a weirdly long amount of time. Alright, let's see... See what happens with this.
2.1 million health. Good god. Alright. Uh, can I summon the Mimic for this? Oh, I bet I can. Oh, I fucking bet I can. Better not. Oh, I can't. Okay. I'm curious how much damage you're going to do. Okay, good news is... Oh, wow. Alright. You see, you get fucked on. I approve. It's going to jump. Big damage. It's a nice buff there, champ. Shame if you die for it. Twelve K for that. That's actually not bad. That is not bad. Now, how do I get? Let's say. Oh, it's probably acquired material. Oh yeah, just the butterflies. How does the game take you to the mainland? Whoa, okay. <laughs> ah, you son of a bitch. That's pretty good. Imagine you see the butterflies and you just think, oh, nice. And then you're dead. And stuff happens. No, that is what you're supposed to do. That's the best part. Oh, wait, hold on. I need to go through the tutorial area. I need to. I need to see how shit on this boss gets. Let me turn off the tutorials quick. It's gonna keep doing that. Uh, tutorials. Dang, 10 platinum. Nice. Okay, so Journey 2 buff does not make these guys take more than one hit. Hello, friend up top. Goodbye. Hey there, champ. Seems like the damage buff that Journey 2 is going to have really only comes into play much later. Because it seems like these guys do fucking nothing. They actually have health, but really not anything special. Okay, boss should be just up ahead. Is it more broken than... Is it the Zenith? That, like, hella endgame sword they added? It's more broken than that. This guy's got health. What the fuck? I guess maybe he, te he tests... stuff. I don't remember what the tutorial was. It is? Fuck no. Alright. Soldier of Godric. One dude. I think he's dead. 